Hi, we're Debbie and Bob Carroll from Burbank, California. And I'm dressed as a Christmas Carol. Get it? Uh, all right, here's a deck of cards. I'm going to show you a trick. Great. All right. Now, I've never done this trick before, so I hope it works. I'm going to mix these cards up just like this. Okay. And then I'm going to have you pick a card. All right? So what I want you to do is just say stop whenever you want to. Stop. Right here. Right there. I want you to do me a favor. Look, Don't look at the card. Just take it. All right, you got it? I've got it. I hope you took my favorite card in the entire world. I hope I did too. Let me, oh, you did. Scotchmas, we whiskey you a Merry Christmas. Day 13. Well, thank you so much, Bob and Debbie. They were here in town recently, and uh, I went over to their hotel room to film that intro. We so appreciate it. You're going to be hearing a lot more about Bob and Debbie in a couple minutes. Yeah, Bob was a performer here in Las Vegas when I was here, but we our paths never crossed, but uh, we finally did later on in life, and we're going to tell you the whole story about that. But right now, let's get down to business. It is day 13 yeah. of Scotchmas. Let me just grab our handy dandy calendar and mr dale is going to do the honors today what's uh, behind lucky door yeah, we number gotta 13. get it up here so the people can see it it's right here you ready yeah can you see it yeah all right no rips today no rips today uh oh dale you're good you're, you're the best i am good <laughs> By the time we hit day 24, we'll be experts. Well, you will. I, I'll still be struggling. <laughs> oh, what is this? I don't know. What Another that? single malt scotch. Well, most of them are single malts. We've only had, I think, one blend, the Glendronach. I'll look this up. Ugh. It's from the Highlands. It's a single malt, 12-year-old. Mm. I'll show it to the folks. It's 43% volume, so 86 proof. Uh, from the Highlands. Okay, at least we're getting away from Speyside. Let's see what that Highlands dram has to offer. All right, while Paula's uh, investigating that, we pre-recorded a little bit of uh, a, uh, uh, a back and forth between uh, Bob and ourselves, and we want to show that to you right now. Come with us, folks. We're going to do a little bit of old-time showbiz nostalgia, and we're going to talk about paths crossing without even knowing it and we're going to take a look at a very young and skinny dale and paula all in the next segment but before we do that <laughs> our, our good friends bob and and his wife came to uh, las vegas and they gave us these christmas presents this book to me is priceless it's called fabulous las vegas in the 50s this takes you back to an era that I wish I was in. <laughs> I know you wish yeah. it, and the photos are priceless in this book. Yes, it's, it, it's, what a it's just a say. fabulous book. Plus, uh, Debbie is very talented as well. Debbie is an artist in many different kinds of media. I'll put a close-up of these, but she made these earrings, Santa Claus, and she also made me gingerbread man, which of course is perfect for Paula's kitchen as well as she does incredibly beautiful crochets. She made gifts for our baby granddaughter that are just exquisite. So yeah. such a talented family, yeah. the Carols. Right, right. So what are we doing today? We're gonna to talk a little bit about Bob and showbiz. And in fact, Bob and Debbie lived here in Las Vegas for a period of time. We're gonna let Bob tell you about that in his own words. Yes, we moved here for 79, 80, and 81, and 82 around that area. And uh, I wound up working up in the Henderson at an amusement park uh, called Old Vegas. Uh, originally, it was used for the movie Westworld, uh, owned by Burt Sugarman, who married to Mary Hart. And uh, they had this amusement park up there. And I worked, I was a gunfighter. I got killed and uh, shot and killed three times a day. And I was also the deputy. I was also ran a magic shop there, and I did uh, a medicine show where I sold old bottles of sarsaparilla, and I <laughs> did magic and ventriloquism at the same time. Plus, we worked the lounges at that time, when they had lounges, and then they stopped that. So uh, lounges were great, because all the performers could go there and uh, work 24-7. But when the big bosses said, that's the end of that, we just couldn't work anymore there. So. We eventually wound up moving back to Lake George, where I worked at Gaslight Village in Storytown. Great amusement parks in those days. 
Old Vegas. All right. Well, Bob and Deb were uh, down there working at because she worked there too, right? She did. Debbie yeah. told me that I think she said she worked in the arcade. So both of them worked there simultaneously at Old Vegas. Well, they were working. I went and found her over in Ohio and I brought her back and I took her to this place and I think our paths crossed because they never crossed. I was working at the same time he was in town, but I, our paths never crossed uh, professionally. But I think they did in this uh, couple little pictures you might see here. Uh, there was uh, it, it was an amazing place. I wanted to show it to Paula. There, they had this coffin. You could lay down in the coffin. I think there's a picture of me doing that. But there is a picture of a gunfight. Now, let's do a little science or detective work here. Is that fella in the picture, Bob, you're looking at it right now. Is that you? Or is it someone you know? Or is it someone you know? Yeah. Because we were there. It was 1981, and I think you guys were there as well. Yeah, I'm sure we. I'm sure we passed. Pass crossed. Thank you very much. Well done, you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Anyway, we just love. That was just kind of a little bit of whimsical kismet, and I. I just loved. I love that. So, as great as Bob was at you know dying on cue, his actual true love is in fact magic and ventriloquism and he wrote this little autobiographical story about his history he had just an amazing career not a lot of it in Las Vegas but most of it actually over on the East Coast right. and uh, we asked Bob where his love of magic came from so we're gonna let him tell you uh, it came from the Ed Sullivan show because Ed Sullivan every week had different magicians on he had Mark Wilson he had Marvin Roy, Mr. Electric, uh, Paul Fiddler. They had all the great magicians. And I got, got interested in magic when I was eight years old. And I started doing it at eight, and I started performing uh, private parties and became a professional at 18 years old. That's what, I, that's what I loved doing about magic. And then learning ventriloquism from Paul Winchell and seeing Jerry Mahoney and Danny O'Day and Farfel and uh, puppets and magic. Uh, made a career for me for my entire life. Well, our paths may not have crossed back then, but fast forward a couple of years and we're in lockdown. And Bob's living in California, I'm living here. He's doing a live trivia show and I just ha happened to catch it one day and I, I, I got hooked, it was great. So I'm, he's talking and talking and talking. I'm going, wait a minute now. I think that we may have, our past, the past may have crossed at some time. So we contacted each other and by golly, it, it did. And that's how we uh, got this friendship going. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And it, it started as kind of a pen pal -y thing on Facebook. And now it's actually a real in person. And we're yeah. delighted. And the trivia show is fantastic. It's, of course, it's for all ages. He does it like an old 50s, 60s radio show. If you're from that era, you do you know what I'm talking about a lot of you know a lot of uh, uh, noises and stuff and and it's just it's a fun 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 some show some slapstick yeah. comedy and some trivia and some magic but Bob sent us a magic trick and we're gonna close it out with that so Bob take it away
Well, thank you, Bob. We really appreciate you doing that magic trick. This was a very interesting little B-roll we had today, wasn't it? It was, and we want to say thank you to both of you for taking time out of your little Las Vegas Christmas holiday to have us over to your hotel and, and answer some questions for and, us. <laughs> and he was sitting on the bed in the hotel, so I decided to spruce it up a little bit with a little garland and stuff around him. You so. did a fine job with the garland. <laughs> that wasn't there in the room. <laughs> what was that hotel? Not quite. Uh, yeah, they were at the Rampart over on the west side of Las Vegas. Beautiful. We're going to go back and vlog the Rampart. Wow. Yeah, what a great it's place. A, it's a beautiful hotel. All right, Paul, what did you find out about this one? Well, hey, I think I've been practicing my Gaelic since last year because I actually pronounced that correctly. It is Glendronach. <laughs> wow. I said it better the first time. Um, the distillery has been around since 1826, one of Scotland's oldest. It is in the East Highland Hills, and the name means Valley of the Brambles. Um, so, since 1826, they pride themselves on being the sherry cask connoisseurs. And their single malts are always uh, aged in Spanish sherry casks. So this is a deep red gold color, amber color, and it's going to be heavy and robust. So let's see what Good. we think, huh? Oh. Hmm. hmm. That's um, interesting. It's different. It's yeah. an interesting... Aroma, isn't it? Mold wine is what they said. Actually. Is that what it's it is? Like a That's mold what it, wine. Yeah. Sweet, creamy, a it little bit of ginger. It does have. It's spicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is super smooth. <laughs> but it is robust. Yeah. You're right about that. The palate is rich oak, sherry, raisins, and soft fruits. Wow. It's not like a space side though. It's it's a little bit heartier than that. Yeah. I think for a cold highland night you'd want to come home to a dram of this. Yeah, very good. I have to say, we we always try to learn things from not only looking up the, the whiskey distillers and so on, but also from you. We got a comment the other day, I don't even know if you saw it. Somebody suggested, and we already knew this, that if you hold it in your mouth the number of years that it's been aged, it kind of brings out the flavor. We, I've been holding well, them in you, my mouth. You have yeah, been, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you hold it 12 I didn't, seconds. No, I but, didn't know about that. <laughs> um, but yeah, we actually learned that last year. But this is a new one, and I'm going to try it. I might make a little bit of a mess. In order to do the nose, they said put a little whiskey in your hand, rub it together, and put it up to your face. Oh, yeah? Let me smell Oh. And you're supposed to, it kind of disperses the alcohol so that you get, you know, the, the nose that they want you to get, the oak. And where, where did you learn that at? One of our viewers wrote it in a comment. Wow. <laughs> like yesterday or you the day what? before. Seems like a waste of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I can't drink this now. It's evaporating. You have to lick your um, hand. But we do pay attention to you, so thank you for interacting with us and writing. We always love that. All right. Well, there you go. Day 13. Done. Done.